Yes, welcome back. This is F a Rap Critic. I'm your boy Malik16. And no, I'm the son of a king and a queen, but I'm not the chosen one. I'm here with the chosen one, the legend, OC, Brooklyn and Queens Zone, DITC's own Brooklyn Dodger 95, number two. So uh, I want to try to run through some of these these uh, dimensions on your the rap performance, like what you actually did on the mic. Personality. How much of your personality you think you got to really show on this album? Um, well, it's only my second album, but you know, I show some of my dimensions as far as my personality, but it's, it's still early. <laughs> it's right. only the second record. Like, What would you give it on a scale from one to five? Person for my personality, and, and I, I said three, man. Yeah, I mean, personality and charisma is that thing that makes people want to keep listening. And I think you being the youngest member of DITC, I think the youth shows. You know what I mean? That, right. That's but that was the youngest member. I was the second youngest. Got you. Okay. Uh, but I think it shows the tenacity, the hunger, and like right. I said, you know, there's certain songs depending on who you with get more aggressive on that mic and then when you right. need to get laid back you get more laid back um, right right so that's something for y'all to consider on the scale from one to five and the believability right and then the suspension of disbelief we get rappers who go into characters and and i applaud them because they do a good job of letting you know a good this job. is a character yeah. and, and some and, and a lot of rappers don't do that a lot of rappers claim it's a character when they get in trouble with the law, right? They're like, no, nah, it's just a role. But I think, I don't think that's what you were doing on this album. I think you were giving them you. Without saying your government name, you were giving them, like you said, the man. Uh, and and mm -hmm. your, your your claims on there, your, your, your lines, nothing seems crazy outlandish. Even when you're talking about dreams, you make it clear these are dreams. I want to be on a yacht and want to be on a mansion, but you're not like, yo, I'm on a yacht and a mansion. Like, you're not doing right, that. Right. So, yeah. how believable do you think you are on this album on a scale from one to five heartbeats? Well, I believe it ain't no such thing with certain instances as 100%, so I was 99.9%. <laughs> that sounds like a five to me, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I give yeah, it a 4.5. I mean, like, it's like you said, see, I, I, I love when we, as 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 MCs, watch other MCs and what they say and what they're talking about. You an MC from an MC's perspective, you like, that shit, do, get out. Or, like, damn, that sound like something I would, you know, right. it's relatable. And I never had no. I really never had beef. I, I went from up, I went to other states, other countries. People ain't test me really mm. because of what I talked about. You know, if I talked about a, a, a gun and in, in content, it made sense to what I was, you know, painting the picture for. I didn't right. just say, "Yo, my gun is on my waist." Right. I'm not gonna tell you if I got a gun on my waist. Right. There's, there's, a, there's a freedom in, in being a street level rapper, but not a gangster rapper, right? Because you don't have to live up to this on wax every second. And I think that's one thing DITC did. Because I mean, I, I've heard stories. I know DITC got some street stories. Like, and some of the members were heavy street dudes. But when it came Shows to music. Street dude. Exactly. Shows the street dude. Like, you right. know, I'm a live nigga. I, but to me, um, I had cousins that's older than me where I probably got a lot of my style and my class and, and, and whatever from. And they used to be like, yo, um, don't talk no, don't, don't talk something you can't back up, right? Don't talk about shit you can't back up. Don't talk about stuff that's really not your life. Because people are gonna, they're gonna push that, that, that envelope on you. And, you know, when I was young, yeah, we probably said some things when we was younger where, you know, people was like, nigga, you ain't got, what? And, you know, as you get older, you learn not to lie. And some people don't. Some people 
go through their career just talking about lies. And I just, I didn't want to get, get called out on that later on or at that time for being a liar. Hey, hey, hey. Bumpy has a, a great line on this album where he says something like, a lot of dudes is trying to make this gangster rap fusion. <laughs> he said, I don't do all that. And then he says something like, I'll do all these things, but he's like, it's just rap. But I'm living like that, but I also don't have to like claim it to let you like I'll put the lines up, but it's just clever how he does it, because there's a believability when Fox is saying it. It's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Fox can play instruments. He can play piano, he can play French horn, he can play regular horn, but he he also is a right. <laughs> black belt boxer. And it's no bullshit to his knuckle game. And but he's not. How can I put it like this? My street ties go deep as far as being uh linked to certain people. We never had issues, but I never gave off that energy to have any issues. But if I ran through Jersey and had an issue. I know I can get at Tretch because Tretch is my man, Fox's man. And they, all I gotta do is put in a call. Yo, I'm trapped off in your hood. Like, <laughs> something like that. And right. Tretch would be there for me. But when y'all got on that mic, y'all chose to emphasize hip hop. Like, it was always rap. mostly about real rap versus fakers, calling out fakers. And I thought that right. was interesting. A lot of people don't realize, um, Production-wise, from probably 90 to 2000 and some change, it was all DITC production on the radio. Mm. Yeah, now that I think about it, right, Diamond D? Production. We mixed all and friends. original stuff. We had Buck Wild life. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Buck is probably the most known member for the most stuff. Yo, a lot of stuff. That's, that was on the radio in the 90s, whether it was remix or original composition, it was DITC production. That's it. That's it. Dimension three, delivery. How would you describe your delivery on the mic? Because you said you use your talking voice, right? Mm-hmm. How I describe? I don't know. I, I never thought about it. Like, um, yeah. I mean, I think that might be the easiest way to put it. You rap like you talk. I, uh, I say, I said it in music. I rap, I said it in lyrics. I rap how I talk. Yeah. I said it. I don't know the actual songs I said it in, but I've said it in a few songs. Like I rap how I talk, just to emphasize to people like what you see is what you get, what you hear is what you getting. Like what you gonna get if you bump into me on the street? Yo, what's up, man? Like this is how I talk. I this rap the same. There's a clarity to your voice, and, and it's definitely, definitely, and this this is something we don't be realizing until we leave the city. There's a strong New York accent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, your New, your New York accent is distinct, uh, and your tone is somewhere in the middle. It's not a high tone. It's not a deep tone. It's right in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's mid-range, right? But right. you project. Your projection it, is really... On those songs where you want to make it pop more, the projection is there. So like, uh, dangerous. You you you're coming off with with more like of an energetic push as opposed to war games is more like your methodical voice. If that right. makes. Sense. And, and I think the best yeah. rappers, the best rappers have fluctuations of tones. It's like yeah, you can't rap right. the same way you rap on muddy underground as you rap on Jewels or or the Crow. So. <laughs> It's yeah. like you could have, but it might not have been a good match with right. musically, sonically, right? So, right. since you couldn't describe it, I described it for you. <laughs> so, honestly, I learned that shit from Rock Kim and Slick Rick. Mm. They tone, like, Rock keeps more than one, the same tone more than Rick does, but um, to the listeners. Right. Made go up the line of form, what they got to do is keep them different. They fall from yours. You, like, I I learned that from listening to rock and Rick doing the, the zany voices on. Uh, that's probably the perfect album. That's my favorite artist. Great Anybody Adventures of Slick Rick? 
yeah, that's my favorite uh, album. That's my favorite artist. Um, I love all of them, but he's my number one. He's creme de la creme when it comes to everything. What would you give your delivery on this album on a scale from one to five? On this album? Yeah. A three. Like I said, I, I didn't find my pocket until the next album. I gotcha. really found my pocket on the next album. So I'll give it a three, three and a half. All right, for those of y'all unacquainted, go go check out Bon Appetit and put it up there. Uh, Dimension Four, the flow. Now, just like you had different tones of your voice, you had different flows. Uh, mm -hmm. There's songs where you use more syllables. There's songs where you space it out. I noticed on Can't Go Wrong, you really took it like you spaced the words out. You used a simple pattern. That was deliberate, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I learned that from, from Farrell. I learned that from Farrell and Pope. You know, they, I, I, I grew up watching them cram words together. So, for example, um, they had a record called Prisoners of War on their first album. On the Organized Confusion first album. And this lyric is old. So Mars said, wake up to the mathematics of an erratic rap rejuvenator of rhyme the sort of commodomatic poetical medical medicine for the cerebellum. That, that actual lyric is probably like 1987. He just updated it a little bit and added it to the album. It made me concentrate on perfecting flow and syllable. He used to be like, yo, you have to learn how to take breaths where, you know, it, it, it sound natural. Mm -hmm. And that's how, you know, the whole uh, uh, rap how you talk thing came in later on and it made me understand like, you know, sometimes you ain't gonna, if you don't know, if you know, you know, if you don't, you don't. And the flow on the lyrics and the sustainability of that is is not easy to keep if you're not practicing and that's 15 10 15 years in the making so i ain't just learned that right there's some there's some verses you have where the words definitely cross the bar line and spill into each other and that makes it seamless and now that you mentioned that thing you said a couple minutes ago about rakim that's something that he kind of introduced to the game where the words roll over. So if I just think of a line like, okay, you simple, simple stuff like on Jewels where you're like dreaming of Tahiti, but I settle for Bahamas. I get a boner when I'm a, you, you, you make that rhyme with the, you know what I mean? With the yeah. rhyme. So, I mean, you, you got different flows here. And, and mm -hmm. then there's, there's even, there's simplified flows on the slowest song. I do think, you know, you slow the pattern down so the words can breathe. Um, right. So, what would you give your flow on the scale from one to five on this album? A solid four. Solid I'd four. A solid four. Yeah. Like, like I said, I was still, um, I was still learning on that album, but I was, I was proud at the end product. I was just, I wasn't afraid in a bad way how people would receive it. But it was a, it was they received it, but it was a slow delay for that for a second too, because people was like, oh, you got radio records, oh, he's trying to do the radio, oh, and it was just like, yo, just listen to the album cohesively from beginning to end and see what I'm, I'm my point is. That's all. Don't don't skip, like you know, and you know we come from an era dudes ain't skip unless that shit was whack, right? So it I'm like, yo, just listen to the album. This was the beginning of people having short attention spans, though. So, you know, mm -hmm. something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats, the flow, right? So now let's get into your wordplay. Dimension five, your wordplay. Um, I feel like you're a real direct to the point rapper on this album, at least, where right. it's not a lot of not a lot of trickery going on. You're not going into outer space to make your point. Um, right. You got you got stuff here, right? Like where you like, I grind you like the bicuspid sets in my jaws. You'll go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But like, what, what do, how would you describe your wordplay on this album? 
Um, I never thought about my wordplay like as being, you know, I when you when you say wordplay, I think about Eminem and marching like traction. Like I, I never thought of myself as a wordplay expert. Like I just I'm direct, like you said, and and. Depending on what the music evokes, music evokes is how I approach, gotcha. you know, the, the the disparities in, in you know, in the wordplay. And I just never looked at myself as a word enthusiast, so to speak. Like, and <laughs> like that's crazy because a lot of people would be like, "Nah, he's a, he's a lyricist. He really, you know, chooses these words." Like, who says by cusps, right? So I'm, I'm gonna right. read a couple couple of your lines. You can tell me if you remember what you were thinking when you did that. So on, on chosen one, you said analyze songs nowadays. Most rappers gun sprayed or hustle from night to day. Fiction. I decipher lots of rhymes only to find false info just to see what it meant to owe. Not for real, no skill MCs, mostly all under 20, and I find it funny. That's why the seed was born to lead, assume positions like Noah. What what comes to you when you when you hear that those lines back? Because it's it's pretty clear. You talking about the state of the rap game, right? Uh, I was talking about specifically um how people was, you know, talking that, that gun shit and, and and you know what they to me. Um, you said you grew up in Harlem, right? Mm-hmm. Here you go. What does a gangster look like? Yeah. I mean, no, we, I'm asking, hip- what does a gangster look like? Oh, hip hop has created an image for it, right? It, there's a prototype now. Every era had its look, right? And some would say NWA day, yeah, you wearing dark shades and fitted caps, right? Some would say now you got to have your dreads and hella tattoos everywhere. All right. Showbiz, I'm talking about my circle. He ain't doing no illegal shit now. Right. But listen to Runaway Slave. Look at the title of Runaway Slave. But around that time, him and A was transitioning from getting out of the streets, but they ain't talk that street shit. Right. Right. And, you know, I'm serious shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you have these dudes purposely painting that picture for you like that's what they are you know that's where other sh- that's why I said early then problems come in I used to go state to state I was all over the world I toured everything I never had issues cause my music now I had issues for how I looked you know I had jewelry on I had gold teeth on right you know um I drive nice cars and people will be like disappointed. I, yo, I kid you not. I've had people on occasion approach me in parking lots back in the day or um in a club. I'm like, damn man, like you had Jerry and it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> yo, people are here, bold. Man. Yeah, like bold. Yeah, like yo, fuck away from me. Like you ain't making no sense right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Yo, it's two different worlds, man, and, and I ain't trying to get all deep and shit. But once these worlds merged in our in the game, it fucked up a lot of things, man. It threw a balance, uh, imbalance in the, in the game, you know. Cause now you making music to die. That's why we making music. I, it, I'm it, so know. glad you said it, man. I I need I need the the the, the viewers and the listeners to hear from somebody in it, cause. If you if you say that you're a hater, but it's like nah, man. Like you, at some point we gotta check ourselves and take accountability. Eighty four. Mm. One of my step brothers been locked up. I got another brother that's deaf, which is why my OC is in sign language. My oldest brother, his name is Reese. Mm. He's a deaf jailbird nigga. This nigga, hear what I'm telling you. My oldest brother is a deaf mute, but he been in every prison facility short of Canada. All his life. All his life, my brother been a gangster, but he's a deaf mute. You would 
tell, you couldn't tell by seeing him unless he opened his mouth and said, huh? or, you know, right, the same right. thing. But my brother was, he's a gangster, you know what I'm saying? And um, that shit just taught me to do the opposite. I ain't want to be locked up like them niggas. <laughs> right. Like, my brother is gangster. I ain't want to be go- this. That just goes to everything you've been saying this whole this whole interview. It's like the ones that really got that lived experience, they don't have to floss it. They don't have to it, it speaks for itself. So But yo God, if you if people actually pay attention to me, they would know pieces of my life. My OC sticker, he gave me the idea. I remember that imagery everywhere in New York. The, the, yes. Yes, and that's why we do this to, to revisit things. Hopefully, people give it a deeper listen now, and they really put some mathematics behind it. And then hearing it from, you know, the maker himself, now they understand. I didn't ask you for wordplay. What you give it for one to five? I know you say you don't consider yourself a wordplay guy, but one to five, what you give it? I give it a uh, two. Two. Okay. This dimension six, we talk about punchlines or poetic wisdom. So I, I break this up mostly because I find most rappers, very rarely you get rappers who do both. Uh, you have to get rappers who are these like poetic wisdom layers, like Scarface. Everything he says is right. kind of like a parable you can live by. He's not doing punchlines. But then you get L, L is punchlines all day. Even though he, he can make songs like Street Truck, and casualties of a dice game. I think L was one of those few who had both, you know, when he wanted yeah. to tap into it. So on this album, you know, I, I wouldn't say you're a punchline rapper. Would you would you consider yourself a punchline rapper? Hell no. Yeah, I think I think Knuckles, you know, on the songs with y'all, he was he was punchline heavy. He said something like yeah. if I diss you players, that makes me a diss player. Like he he had lines for days like that. <laughs> I'm um, not. I have my days with that, but I'm. That's that's one of my weakest points. Punchlines. I'm not a punchline dude. Like I'm a poetic dude. Like right. Parables. You know, draw for what I. You know, the lesson for the day. Here's the end of the lesson. Yeah, because even in your battle rhymes, I feel like you leave a little. You know, no pun intended. Jewel <laughs> in there. You know, like there's this life talk in your battle raps. Um, I think so we'll, I, I, I don't even I never even considered myself a battle uh, writer like to me I'm like an aggressor when I need to be mm-hmm. but you know the, to me the, the battle guys in the crew was Ness and A and you know Ness and HD was actually you know these niggas battle DMX like mm. Battle, battle rap's just the lazy way to say like your braggadocio raps. Just those kind of non yeah, yeah, yeah. but I mean, spit. Yeah. To me, it's a whole culture that always did that better than me. Like, for me, like, I was always um, uh, envious in the sense that I didn't have that. Like, mm. like you said, L had both. To me, Finesse has both. Finesse can do both. I think I do a lot of things better than what they do as far as on the poet, on the, the poetic side and, and, you know, quote, quote, but the the, the punchlines, I was never good at that. Yeah. When I think of just some of the language you put together to make your points, right? Like the hooks on the crow and Joel's, like I lust for living a life of righteousness with invisible forces. like. The words you chose to put together that that says what kind of writer you are. Uh, right. So what would what would you give yourself on a scale from from one to five on the poet poetic aspects of this album? Let's see. What I said in the crow uh, chorus, my wisdom when I'm dropping it is something like a doctrine, necessary like oxygen. I see who's the opposite and who's the air light. So let's attract the repel, the third rate government they're trying to see. I give myself a five. There you go. I mean, even on the, the quote unquote radio singles, right? I'd be the chosen one. Beyond the Moet and the Crystal, the, the son Christ of the Dallas. king. Is yeah. I gave I yeah. gave ideas to L. Ron Hubbard to write books on Dianetics. Like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Better check your info. If you want something for manager, Mr. Day, you can give us a good payday too. Like, right. see, that's that's the, the shit you just described with Fox. Like I said, payday too, but I was I'm not good at that. But yeah, it that, makes sense for me to say that, but I said that, you know? That's wordplay right there. That's wordplay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. an accidental punchline, but like you said, that wasn't yeah. your bag. Got you. Right. All right. Something for y'all to consider on a scale from one to five. Since since we touched on, on, on personal territory, you started describing it. The crow, that sounded mm -hmm. like it came from a a personal experience you had. What was what's the the story behind the crow? Because we talk about concepts, that is the most conceptual song on the album. Um, I never forget this, man. I was living in Crown Heights at the time, and I was working on Jewels. And um, I came home late one night, and I just seen a whole row of magpies sitting on the on the on the telephone wire one night, and that shit just spooked me. I probably was high or something, <laughs> and came home and I seen them. And when I when I uh got in the crib. I fell asleep and I dreamt about it, but I dreamt about actually what's going on today. All the shit that's going on, the, you know, the wars and, and uh, I wrote the whole song. I woke up from a nightmare and wrote, and wrote that record. True story. And that's what I like, thought. Yeah. That's what I thought. Because the first verse sounds like you saw a premonition, a personal premonition. Like, because first it was like, a childlike figure, then it was like a man, you said he, he seemed sick, and you were like, you didn't like that. You woke up, your wife was next to you, and you yeah. like, was that a message from God? But then the second verse, like you said, is where you started seeing all the atrocities through the eyes of the crow. Right, like, right, I, because I, the um, it, it was like the crow turned into a man. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was God or the devil or entity or some, which, you know, um, dreams interpret things that you don't see when you woke. You know, I said no. that in the record before, dreams interpret the things that we don't see when we actually conscious. So when you subconscious is when, you know, all the activity really, you know, is active, especially when you sleep. And yo, the bird went from a bird to a man. You know, the shadow, I seen it from my eye and the shadow grew bigger. And it turned into a man, and it, it, the shit spooked me. And I wrote the whole record. I woke up and wrote the record, and that's when I told Shola I did. And he was like, "Yo, I got this record I copped out of Japan that I've been sitting on for two years. I think I'm a flip it yeah, to that shit." I, I had to read the lyrics along with it because as many times as I've heard it, I was like, "Oh, is is this what's going on, yo?" I mean, we need to t we need to pause for a minute and, and celebrate. The, the poetic just ability it takes to make a song like that and and mm -hmm. to put that in the rap album where you have songs like strong j and dangerous and you know you could go from battle rap to this poetic song and not lose any of that ground it wasn't this deviation it wasn't this weird moment it was just it fit right. and i knew that came from a personal place so thank you for confirming it because i mean that's I think you're right. I think people do overlook some uh, some of the stuff you've done in, in, in rap history because you know that's that's the type of stuff Nas does and, and gets you know people go all up in arms for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, and no mm -hmm. one's done a song like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad you got to explain that because I, I mean that's mm -hmm. the most conceptual song on the album. Now, hypocrite, does that come from a, a lived experience too? Yeah, just just experiences, you know, growing up and even for my 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 you know my own self. I'm not perfect. Like I've done shit that was hypocritical half my life. We probably all did. And instead of calling uh, other people out, people don't realize I'm I'm actually talking about myself on that record. You know, but from a standpoint of you know, having conversations with my man and, you know, him hustling and, you know, shit like that. And, you know, just mixing the story up, being creative. Yeah. You know, what what Chris said, poetry's the language of imagination. 
you know, probably not one of the ever that people use their imagination. Probably the only rap song in history to mention Seneca apple juice. That that line always stood out to me. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what would you give this album on, on a scale from one to five on the, the conceptual material? Five. Give All right, five. let's go. Yeah, I know my concept game is is, is heavy. So you know, I, I, I definitely, I'm definitely proud of uh, being super creative when it comes to, you know, sitting down and imagining or taking, you know, me and your conversation and changing the the the, the players or the or the names and you know, right, putting things yeah. together. And, and pulling John from inspiration and just just making it its own entity. Got you. All right, home stretch here. We almost finished here. Something for y'all to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. Um, we talk about the external and the internal content. How much did you talk about outside things? How much did you talk about autobiographical or, or personal things? Right. We you you said a bunch of times already, this is you, you give your life, you know, like mm -hmm. on, on wax, you're not playing a role. And you mentioned Can't Go Wrong was a dedication to your real wife. You talked about your mm -hmm. own story from like middle school, how y'all met right. <laughs> to, right, to right. going on tour, the Temptations on tour, which right. I, again, I want to pause right now and give you your flowers for that. Brother, this is on my rap love songs playlist. This is my personal, you know, on my personal rap, I play this with my girl, right? Because it's, it's probably right. the best, most organic, authentic rap love song. I know you mentioned L, but L has a way of kind of like, you know, I'm talking to all women, you know, I'm right, talking right, to right. L. This, it felt genuine from the moment. I'm like, yo, this man didn't care how, who thought this was a soft song. He's like, yo, I'm making this, I mean this from the heart and... It's, it just comes off as a real genuine joint, man. So, yeah. Um, when I wrote that record, I probably had, like, like a few side women <laughs> when I did the record. So, you know, I got it. You know, I didn't get in trouble, per se. But, you know, I was young and doing my thing at that time. So, they were definitely upset, or the couple that I was dealing with, or cheating with on the side, I you want to call it right. cheating. Um, they definitely wasn't happy with that record because <laughs> one thing I never did, and I'm not making this some more manly uh, uh, shit like that or anything like that. I would always tell other women like, yo, this is what it is, and you either deal with it or you don't. You know, and I'm not proud of that shit. I'm not trying to make it like I'm a, you know. And they definitely was like, you made a record for, for her about her? It's like, no doubt. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yo, I, I, yo, so much props for being truthful and honest. I'm sure y'all didn't laughed about this and worked it out. Y'all still together. Like, it's, it's. Ugh. Yo, it's part of being a man, man. Like these, these hard yeah. combos and acknowledgement, it, and people don't understand how you can love and do dirt at the same time. That's that's love. <laughs> Yo, we human, man. And, and right. like I said, I'm not, I'm not promoting cheating, but I was young. I was in my in early twenties. We wasn't married at the time, and um, you know, at the end of the day, it was like. That's how I felt when I heard the music. And OG produced that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. um and it, it he gave me the idea. Using that he intro sample. Idea. Yeah, he was like, yo, um, this record would be dope about, you know, her nickname is Booby. And we was like, yeah. And I was like, damn, man, like, why you gonna do that to me? <laughs> and then he was like, come on, man, that's my sister. I don't care. Care about these other chicks, like da 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 da. Like it's just, I, this is what I thought about when I made the beat, and I was like, and when I listened to it, it was like, damn, like he's right. Yeah, it's a joint, man. It's definitely a jam. It didn't sound like, 
it was contrived at all. And so you had that that was deeply personal. The crow mm -hmm. came from a, a dream. You just said hypocrite was kind of like uh, this fusion of you and your man who was in the streets, kind of putting them together. And then right. there, there's other moments on there too. Uh, this records on the album that didn't make the album. It was a record on the album called Respect the Drop. Mm. That was on, um, I put it on Bon Appetit, but it was it was for Jewel's I recorded it. I got robbed in Baltimore. You know, niggas was hustling out there. I had my jewelry on that I had on on the front of the album cover for Jewel's. And I got robbed in Baltimore for that shit. Like, so this was all experiences when I was uh, damn near finishing that album. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, damn, <laughs> that would have been an ill song. I would, I would love. I, I gotta go now. And listen to Bone Appetit again. And yeah, respect the drop was be on Jewels because I got robbed during the finishing or mastering or damn near, you know, mixing them. I was mixing Jewels. That would have been I an ill that record song off. to fit yeah. to fit the title, right? That that would have been ill. Uh, just Thank another you. dimension. Now, outside topics, uh, you know, I know on the crow, you say you start talking about the premonitions of all the stuff we going through now, uh, you know, wars and, and, and all the madness. But outside of that, I don't know if you talk too much about life things like government and the streets and the ills of the world. It, this wasn't that album where you did a lot mm. of that, right? Nah. So what we, no. What would you give uh, the content on the scale from one to five heartbeats? Like how much you talking about topics? Um, well, I, I, I'll give it a four and a half, but that's why I named it Jewel. You know, like, you know, back in, you know what's up, back in the day, you'd be like, yo, I, they gave me a jewel. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's where the, the Jewel and World Life, that's how, Think about it. That's what we used to say. We're like, or you know, they gave me a jewel. Um, I give jewel like. Yeah, you said four point five. That's um four point five, and and I stick with that because it, it was just something that I guess I learned up to that point. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, storytelling. Yeah. What would you give the storytelling on this album? Because, I mean, you, you you do narration on all the three joints we just talked about. You know, like, Can't Go Wrong is a story, Hypocrite is a story, Crow's a story. Um, how well do you feel like you executed the stories on a scale from one to five? Five. Yeah. They, 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 they used to be the rule in the 90s. 90s, the purists would say, you're not making a classic hip-hop or you're not a good rapper if you can't tell me a good story to Bob. You ever heard that? Yeah, nah. Just yeah, yeah. Your story game uh, summed up your uh, your album package. You had to at least have one of those. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you considered yourself a lyricist or a pen enthusiast, um, yeah. you had to you had to tell a story, and and it showed your back. It showed you know more tricks in your bag. You know, if you Absolutely. told stories, I mean, shit. One of the greatest records is the children's story. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> I knew you was gonna bring Slick Rick up again. I mean, he's, him and Nas, I honestly, greatest storyteller rappers ever. That's their thing. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I give Rick. punch lines to, yeah. to Kane and L and Fab. They, they like punchline kings and finesse. You gotta throw finesse in there. But stories, mm -hmm. You know, and and that's why I love having these conversations because people just take one aspect and be like, this rap is the best because of that. And then you got favorites. Best and favorite don't have to be the same thing. Right. No, I don't. And and um I know where I stand at, but like I said, it's not my place in my mind, at least personally, for me to be like, yeah, I'm I'm I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like I've stood in the room with niggas. They know what it is, <laughs> and that's all I. That's that's good enough for me. Got you. Yo, you one of those. It's like word. 
on that note, yo, I will see. Let the people know where they can find you and what you got cooking next. What, what projects you got coming up? What should we be looking out for? Um, it's probably my last solo album. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's wow. about it, man. Like at the end of the day, um, IG you can catch on IG at O C D I T C or you can hit the Twitter. I'm the old, the real old sizzle on Twitter and look out for this new project, man. Like this is this final album for me. And, you know, I'll still be making music on other people's shit, but after this solo project, it's probably a wrap for me. You just feel like it's time to no more full lengths, just a little bit. Yeah, I think, I think you should know when to be like, say when, you know what I'm saying? And, and I want to go out on a good note, just on a bullshit, man. I just don't want to go out like that. I want people to be like, damn, like he had a full career. Um, for the most part, I like this shit. And he wasn't a whack motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, that's that's a mic drop moment there, man. And I don't know how y'all do that, man. I don't know how how y'all make the decision to make the final one. But yo, more power. I will be we'll be waiting for it, brother. Like <laughs> we'll be waiting for it. We'll be checking it out. And uh hopefully that that joins the conversation of the classics along with this album that we're talking about, the 25th anniversary of Jewels. Um it's been an honor, man. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Salute, respect. Salute. Uh, appreciate thanks for you for joining man. our little show. And uh, yo, listen, thanks for reaching, uh, uh, extending your hand out to me. Um, I appreciate you, man. And, and I dig this. I dig the whole concept. And it's all it's, it's crazy. And to read your own stuff is like a little cringe work. <laughs> It's you wild, yo. You was like, a good ass sport about it, man. Yo, three we and it only took this long because we started getting into stories. You know, if we would have stayed on topic, it would have been half the time. But that means mm -hmm. you, you must, you must vibe, and I, I appreciate that, man. That, it, you you helped nah, me out a lot. Y'all uh, know what it is. Until next time, F a rap critic. They talk about it while I live in words of meth. Personality and charisma. How compelling was this rapper or, or, or these rappers of their group in getting you to care about what they had to say on this album? How well of a job did they do of drawing you into their world, of gripping you into what they had to say? That's something you want to be considering on a scale from one to five heartbeats.